I just thought I'd give us a, just a few more minutes so people who might be um, having a little difficulty uh, joining us can um, come to the meeting. So just two or three minutes and then we'll begin. Another one. More mute. Found another one. again everybody it is now um 607 we have 30 uh, members of this meeting and i suggest just in the interest of time that we begin um, for those of you who don't know me i'm vivian brady phillips i'm the executive director of the jersey city housing authority and this is part of our regular series of holland gardens resident meetings regarding the redevelopment of the property. So I, I also wanna take a moment and acknowledge uh, that we also have um, Board uh, Commissioner uh, Reginald Jones with us this evening. And I know we, uh, I also see that we have um, Count, City Council President uh, Joyce Waterman and Councilman Rolando Lavaro. Um, whenever we do these, um, meetings, we invite residents and other stakeholders. I'm very happy to see that uh, our invitees, Waterfront Project and Northeast Legal Services are represented as well as um, all so many representatives of our residents and members of our staff. So if I didn't uh, get a chance to name you, welcome. Uh, and tonight, uh, the way we've been doing this is uh, in the fall, uh, residents, uh, after we had a regular quarterly meeting, uh, asked for a special meeting just to talk about housing choice voucher options when we get to the relocation phase. And I asked uh, Patricia Ramirez, who is the longtime director of our um, housing choice voucher program to present. This evening, we're giving uh, a status update 
but I have also invited Ken Pinnock, who is our purchasing agent uh, for the Jersey City Housing Authority and has been since 1997, to give an overview of the procurement process that we're about to undertake. So we view this both as a status update and also an opportunity to share with residents and members of the public um, how these processes work. We'll be providing a legal and regulatory framework for how procurement works uh, when you're a public housing authority and how we're approaching it at the JCHA. Um, so with that, um, I, uh, I think Ken, you have, I don't know if Ken or Nehru have the controls. Yes, thank you. So the, on the agenda tonight is a project status, um, including uh, the status of the Jersey Avenue light rail redevelopment plan. And then, as I mentioned earlier, an overview of the procurement process for property development. And then we'll have an opportunity for questions and answers. So in terms of project status, um, as will be discussed tonight and as previously shared, we're doing for this property development, a bifurcated RFQ and RFP process. Um, our RFQ will come out this spring. Uh, the RFP, the plan is for the summer. And then the review process in the fall. Pre-development as previously shared, uh, fall to fall 2021 to 2022. And we still anticipate that relocation will be the earliest of fall 2022, but might actually uh, move up a bit to winter 2023. Um, as always, all admissions and continued occupancy policies, these are the public policies that can be found on our website and which are updated annually as part of our annual plan um, and lease requirements remain in effect. Um, please ensure that you abide by these policies and in compliance with your lease throughout this process. As previously mentioned, I give this caution because even though we're planning a redevelopment of the site, um, all of the landlord tenant and policies uh, stand um, at this time. So, uh, and I, I do believe Matt Ward is on the uh, call as well, representing the planning department. So even though we have not met uh, since December when we had our last group meeting, uh, we actually held off because in the meantime, there were the um, meetings held by the planning department. And I was very glad to see that many of our residents and other people very interested in the development of Holland Gardens, the redevelopment of it, participated in the uh, planning sessions held by uh, Jersey City's planning division. Um, what I can share is that the Holland Gardens vision, which was the result of the six month uh, resident charrette process um, has been incorporated aspects of it into the, re the proposed redevelopment plan. So for example, you know, we have spoken quite a bit about um, our, uh, uh, the goal of one-to-one -one replacement of public housing units. Um, and that is part of the Holland Gardens vision. It has been adopted by the Jersey City Housing Authority Board of Commissioners and widely published. And now it is part of the amendments for the density bonus uh, in the um, amendments to the redevelopment plan. So further supporting um, that vision of having one-to-one -one replacement of uh, the public housing units when the site is redeveloped. Uh, also, uh, as we shared in the fall, the proposed library or other public use and a resident services facility. The design that has been amended now includes uh, uh, a proposed library and embedded in the library, a Jersey City Housing Authority resident empowerment and community engagement office uh, to serve residents of Holland Gardens. Uh, what is an, uh, one last thing I want to just remind everyone, not only are we returning all of the public housing units, uh, but we now uh, are planning to add home ownership, including majority home, affordable home ownership at the site, in addition to the one-to-one -one replacement of public housing units. You can advance the slide. Matt Ward, I don't know if, if you wanted to provide uh, just an update on where the redevelopment plan is. 
Uh, thanks, Vivian. Um, I'm happy to be here. Uh, so it, I believe it is scheduled for the uh, for introduction to the city council at the May 13th meeting. Uh, that is the first of two meetings. Um, if it is introduced and uh, it would be scheduled for the subsequent meeting after that, and that's when the council would make the final vote. Um, but we will, um, city planning will be attending the council caucus to answer any of the questions that the council people may have on the 10th. And then again, the, the council meeting is the 13th. Thank you, Matt. Mm -hmm. And before I turn it over to Ken Pinnock, who'll be talking about uh, the, the framework for how procurement is done uh, for a redevelopment project. I just wanted to talk a little bit about how this falls in lines with sort of the, what I would say is an unprecedented development process for Holland Gardens. Typically, um, resident charrettes are done after a developer has been selected. Uh, and that has been the case in uh, previous JCHA projects. Here, the visioning process preceded the procurement process. Um, and that allowed us to have greater resident participation throughout uh, and design input. Um, we have resource best practices to adopt policies that protect resident rights during the redevelopment and for a right of return. And now we will be discussing the inclusion of resident participation in the selection process by adding a member uh, of uh, uh, nominated by the Holland Gardens Resident Council to the RFP Evaluation Committee. So with that as an opening, um, I am now going to turn uh, this presentation over uh, to uh, Ken Pinnock, who is the purchasing agent for the Jersey City Housing Authority. He is also a qualified purchasing agent under uh, the state of New Jersey and uh, is a very busy person at the authority for many years. Uh, and has been in this role since, I believe, 1997. So I'd like to, uh, with pleasure, introduce Ken Pinnock. Ken, you are on mute. You're still on mute. Okay, sorry for that delay. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ken Pinnock, and my intention is to provide you with a brief overview of the JCHA procurement process for property development. At the end of this, that process, what's going to happen is we are going to select and contract with a developer. Let me start by saying that the government uses the language of initialism. And I know some of you might be saying, well, what's that? I thought you'd never ask. It means that we use a lot of abbreviation or acronyms. Some of them you are familiar with, like JCHA or HUD, and others you may not be so familiar with, like RFP, QPA, or YOLO. And for those of you that don't know what YOLO means, it means, um, you only live once. <laughs> I will explain them and um, we'll use them from time to time during the presentation. Let me start by providing you with a little background. Okay. The JCHA was founded in 1938. We're Jersey City's largest affordable housing provider, responsible for the administration, repair and maintenance, modernization and redevelopment of 2,500 public housing units. And we administer approximately 4,600 housing choice vouchers. My department, the Department of Contracts and uh, Procurement and Contract Administration 
My team manages approximately 2,000 purchase orders and 150 contracts annually. We're always seeking the best possible prices for goods and services in compliance with federal, state, local laws, and regulations. The JCHA procurement policy is comprised of these laws and regulations. The first three sources are federal, followed by two New Jersey state sources, and finally, the city of Jersey City. Collectively, they cover a wide array of purchase topics. And if two regulations cover the same topic, we follow the stricter rules. I do want to add that the JCHA procurement policy is regularly updated to reflect governing laws and regulations and best practices. This list is a list of JCHA purchase categories. And as you can see, it looks like, a, uh, at least on the supply side, it looks like a mini Home Depot. Anything that you could think of that goes inside of a house or an apartment are typically items that we utilize. Um, on the other hand, there are services. And those services, as you can see, counting, architectural, and at the bottom, the one that we're going to focus on, development. These are just a few out of about approximately 60 categories that we do have that we work with. The JCHA utilizes different purchase methods depending on the type of goods or services needed and the threshold limits. There's a small purchase method, which is basically getting quotes. There's the invitation to bid, which is also known as public bidding, non-competitive or emergency contracts, request for qualifications, which is an RFQ, and the request for proposal process, the RFP method. And the RFP method, it requires a scope of services that's result oriented. And this leads me to um, this slide to talk about what the differences are between public bidding and competitive contracts. Now, I know you, I've said competitive contracting, which is the same as the request for proposal process. This is the term that the state uses, competitive contracting. Public bids are contracts that are awarded to the lowest bidder or based on lowest price to the company that is the most responsive and responsible. When I say responsive, that means that they have filled out their documents, the required documents properly. And responsible means that they have the qualifications and experience in order to complete or provide the, the material, complete the, the service or provide the materials. And this is used typically when you can very easily describe with standard specifications what it is that you're looking for. If you remember anything from that list, um, for instance, appliances, we can describe a refrigerator, um, cabinets. Uh, on the service side, it could be roof repair or um, a plumber. Those things are easily described and can be awarded to the vendor with the lowest price. On the other hand, competitive contracting or RFPs, contracts are awarded to the responsive proposal that receives the highest score from an evaluation team. Now it talks about the greatest value and it is, that's how they obtain the score, um, which generally translates into the company with the greatest value. Now, typically the scope of work is the most difficult thing to develop for an RFP because it needs to clearly describe what the vendor requirements are, the desired outcomes, 
and the evaluation criteria, which is how the winner is selected. So this, this solicitation method is more appropriate when we're purchasing specialized goods and services where the characteristics are not easily described. Some of the common uses of the RFP are listed here, architectural, engineering, legal. And if you look at the bottom, it goes back to developer and development partner. This leads us to the procurement process for mixed finance development. Ultimately, if you took away the mixed finance, it would just be procurement process for development. But the mixed finance refers to the use of public, private, and nonprofit funds to develop and operate a housing development. This process permits us to utilize both the RFQ and the RFP competitive proposal process. As I said before, the RFQ stands for Request for Qualifications. It, and in that process, we're looking to determine eligibility for the RFP process. Some of the factors that we use to determine eligibility are experience and financial capacity. On the other hand, the RFP is evaluated based on a redevelopment design and plan. Just, those are just some of the topics that are covered under the RFP because it's result oriented. The RFQ is more based on your past performance and your experience. Now, these are some of the sample evaluation criteria that would be found in an RFP. The proposal should demonstrate the understanding of the RFP requirements. The proposal should provide the experience, qualifications, and impact and capacity of the team. The team, is the team complete and is there a precise staffing plan? Does the proposal provide for minority and women owned business participation and companies with equal opportunity affirmative action requirements? Does the team have experience with developing section three plans? These, some of these things, especially the section three plan is unique to housing authorities because it's a HUD requirement. And to the greatest extent possible, what happens is we should be hiring residents, local Jersey City folks, uh, provide training and, and uh, contracting opportunity for businesses. This leads us to the RFP evaluation committee. RFPs are evaluated by a committee which makes a recommendation to the JCHA board. The evaluation committee composition is tailored to the type of service the JCHA is procuring. Uh, for example, we recently were, um, had an RFP for a HRIS and payroll service solution. And that's basically software for our HR to help manage the benefits and a payroll software. The committee members for that particular project were the HR director, our CFO, which is our chief financial officer, and the IT director. So because it was software-based, it involved payroll, which is a finance department function, and HR, the people with the expertise were involved in the selection process. Per the HUD handbook, the evaluation committee may also include a resident when it comes to development procurement, provided that, of course, that they're adequately trained in the procurement process. The committee is comprised of experts and the resident has an expertise based on their experience as a public housing resident. 
The evaluation committee members must also attend all evaluation meetings and oral presentations. Um, this is all essential in order for us to complete the evaluation process. The evaluation committee member is required to sign a certification of non-disclosure. That's about confidentiality. Just like uh, if you were a juror in a court case, the information that you have is privileged and should just be yours and the committee, and that's it. Shouldn't be given out. And then there's also a statement of no conflict. The, these HUD handbook rules from 7460 are about development evaluation committee members serving as agents of the JCHA. They specifically point out the inclusion of residents and that they have to be trained. They also talk about how residents who serve on a panel, they become an agent of the public housing authority. And therefore they are subject to the same conflict of interest rules. That means they become just like me or like our director of development, that they have responsibilities and they have to comply with the rules and regulations. Now, this uh, last piece, I've kind of come up with my own condensed answer, talking about anyone that's acting as an agent. Evaluation committee members are agents of the public housing authority and must be impartial and fair when it is awarding contracts. And this is to maintain and foster the public's confidence in the integrity of the process. So that's my short version of what it is that you're looking at right now. I thought that this one was a little bit wordy also. The government, we are full of language, um, but it also touched on subjects that weren't necessary when it comes to the uh, process of selecting a developer, the procurement process for the selecting the developer. But it is relevant as far as confidentiality is concerned. So it says the disclosure of confidential information to any person not authorized by the contracting officer or purchasing agent, which I'm both, to receive such information shall be a breach of ethical standards. My short, short story on this is ethical standards means follow the rules. Whatever the rules are, just follow them and then you're being ethical. If you don't follow the, the rules, then you're being unethical. There is an appropriate time to share public information, but not during the evaluation process. If you have any questions during the evaluation process, I am the person to approach. Not other committee members or staff. Ultimately, all evaluation committee members are agents of the JCHA and should keep information confidential. Holland Gardens Evaluation Committee Resident Participation. JCHA management in consultation, I'm sorry, in consultation with HUD will recommend the inclusion of a resident on the evaluation committee. The resident will be in good standing and will be selected from candidates nominated by the resident council of Holland Gardens. The JCHA will review the qualifications of the resident candidate. And the JCHA will train the selected resident in the procurement process and provide any other training or guidance recommended by HUD. And that ends my presentation for this evening. And this, I'm gonna open the floor for any questions or comments. Thank you.
I'm just going to look and see if we have any questions in chat. I have a question. Sure, sure. Uh, my name is Danielle Walker and I'm a resident of Holland Gardens. And what I wanted to ask was, um, will the developer be chosen based on previous projects with the JCHA? Is that a past practice or is it based on um, whomever decides to uh, request to redevelop the property? Can I answer that question? Sure. Okay. No, it is not a requirement for you to do business with the Jersey City Housing Authority in order for you to be selected. It is an open process. And basically, if you qualify, no matter where you come from in the country, you will be able to submit a proposal. And uh, whoever the highest rated proposal is, is the company that will be selected. So no, that's not a requirement. Oh, you know, I, I, I wasn't trying to imply that it was a requirement. I was just asking like, was it past practice um, for Jersey City Housing Authority to continue to work with developers who, um, where you jointly worked on projects together? No, we're looking for the best company or the best developer for the job. Okay. Ms. Council, I see your hand up. Oh, I tried to do it right. Hi. Um, with this, the process of um, the one resident, uh, which you have in a team of um, uh, a team that goes with this development, why only one resident? Okay. Well, the kit, the committee, according to HUD. The majority needs to be comp comprised of JCHA staff. Um, it's, it's similar to our board. Um, there has to be an odd number of people on the committee. And uh, typically that number is three, five, or seven, depending on the complexity of the project. Understood. But my, my question again is, uh, why only why only one resident because uh everyone has their own you, you know you guys are staff you have no you, you know you're back you're behind the desk pushing pens but you're not walking the beat and know the actual the actual areas and sometimes and i'm just saying for me for for myself i work construction so i could i could put a little bit in and a little bit you know let you know certain things that may be required or, you know, just thought about. Cause sometimes you're just on a basic, oh, one track, you know, we have to put our heads together and make this a better project. We're just not the one that's just here. We have to make different um, aspects, you know, we, we could change it around a little bit. Well, I'll, well, I'll answer, I, I'll, I'll respond to that. I think that whatever, uh, you know, all I have said to the resident council is that the criteria is that it's someone in good standing and someone that they think can represent the entire community well. I think it's a good conversation to have with the resident council uh, and to figure out uh, what the criteria, you know, what their perspective is on the criteria for um, the resident who's selected, right? So I hear what you're saying. You think that the resident who's selected would be better off having some construction background. The way the housing authority views it is that what the resident brings to the table is the experience of being a public housing resident. Um, so that's you know that's how I would answer I would answer that. And we actually have never, as a housing authority, had a voting member on the evaluation committee. Uh, to my knowledge, this is the first time that there has been a voting member of the evaluation committee, who is a resident? Well, I work yes, on, 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 on most of the sites. That's why I said that. So there should be, well, everyone had their input with Curry's and, and you know, where we started from. So everyone had their input on how things were gonna go. And it could have, you know, came from the resident as a whole, and then, you know, trickled down to you guys. I mean, you know, like, 
like you said, to your knowledge, but we have, we've, we've been on this. The residents are the stakeholders. We, we, you know, we make decisions as well as you do. That's, that was my, that's, that's my take on it. Okay. Well, Vivian, I just wanted to add that we also, um, you know, uh, there are possibility of sitting in on some of the oral presentations um, in an advisory capacity. Um, or maybe other methods in order for you to share your comments or opinions. So there may be other methods Thank during you. the process. <laughs> oh, I just want to, I see Councilman Rolando Lavaro has asked, uh, Councilman Lavaro, every presentation and the videos are uploaded onto the Holland Gardens uh, vision site which you can reach either independently or through our website. So if you go and look, you will see this, uh, which should be up by tomorrow, plus the presentation and all prior presentations and videos. Are there any other questions? Oh, and I know, oh, thank you. I see the, the link to the Holland Garden site is there. So I, I guess since there, I don't see other questions at this time, I would just reiterate that um, the resident- Sure, who's speaking? Hi, this is Bernadine Taylor. I'm a resident council um, member. And I yes. was just wondering, could one of the resident council members be considered for that position? Abs absolutely, absolutely. So, Great. Great. so under, under 24 CFR 960, Four, I believe, um, the housing authority has to work with the elected resident council um, on mm -hmm. all issues related to um, the resident experience, right? So right. that is why we have uh, gone to the resident council and said we would ask that the resident council nominate candidates, um, whether or not the member is uh, part of the evaluation committee or uh, part of any advisory group, the same rules apply. We're looking for someone in good standing and the person would have to um, sign off on a confidentiality agreement and on a no conflicts agreement. Other than that, we're really looking to resident leadership to propose um, who uh, they think would best represent the community um, and understanding of the of the responsibilities. So with regard to an evaluation committee, I think Ken referenced, it really is a, a big job and an, I think an, an incredible honor to represent your community that way on an evaluation committee. Um, the member would have to attend uh, the training, which is required by HUD, and any mm -hmm. other training or guidance that HUD requires us to use. Um, they would also have to attend all of the meetings and meet the general guidelines uh, for participation. Okay, great. Excellent. Thank you. You're very welcome. Vivian. Yes. Am I, am I, muted? I, I oh, can't okay. hear you. I'm, I'm sorry, Ms. Council. Getting... I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. I could. I, I didn't know if you can hear me. That's what. Hey, oh, okay. I heard you. Um, I heard my name. So you you are aware. <laughs> I was saying hey hey hey, and then I said Vivian. Okay, okay. Listen. Um, 
you uh we have two um we have a resident association which you know and then we have a resident board we have two um representations of holland gardens because of this so i just wanted you to know that we do have two separate we I, have two i am very aware of that and yeah, i would suggest that whatever groups of residents want to work on this project together. that they work with the board together. because the housing authority has to officially recognize the board and whoever which means the resident council and whoever um mm -hmm. they work with they tell us who they're working with i got you okay, okay. so I, I'm, I just wanted it to be fair sure no I'm, I'm aware okay Uh, Director Phillips. Yes. Uh, this is Councilman Lavaro. Um, so I apologize. I kind of was jumping in and out of the meeting and uh, simultaneous Zooms going on here. But um, and, and this is my first time uh, um, joining you in one of your quarterly meetings here and the presentation. So thank you um, for th for the information and thank you, Mr. Pinnock, for the presentation. Um, I just had a question uh, and, and and you probably covered it long ago and uh, apologize, but I'm not aware. But uh, um, as you look to go out to RFP and to uh, for bid for this, um, in terms of um, the property for Holland Gardens, is it being leased out or is it being, um, or are you looking to to sell the property? No, we do not sell the property. It would be okay. a long-term lease. It'd be a long-term lease. And do you have an idea of how long that long-term lease is? It's, uh... um, at this time, I I am uh, I could give you a range. Yeah. But that will be in all of the procurement information. Okay. What would the range be? Um, Steve, do you want to answer that? I'll put council on for you, Councilman. Sure. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Steve C, a director of development. Um, so, um, Councilman, uh, Council Parson, usually it's anywhere from 55 years to 85 years. However, because we have a large market rate um, component as well, um, any financier is going to want to see a 99 year ground lease. So that, that would be the expectation. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? Hi, Vivian. Yes. Hi, Ms. Matthews. How soon do you need the um, the nominee for the evaluation committee? Um, you know, we can talk about it, but our hope would be that there would be nominations, in, you know, uh, before the end of June. But you know, okay. you and I have, to, you know, I haven't had a chance to sit down with the resident council to see what you think is feasible. Uh, but our hope would be okay. by the start of the summer. Okay, so we'll meet by the end of the month, maybe. Yeah, and we can talk okay. about how you want to proceed. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. I'm just checking chat to make sure I haven't missed anything else. I, I don't think so. Any other questions? One more thing, Vivian, I'm sure. sorry. Absolutely. Can you remind the tenants of the um, relocation time again? I know it was oh. from fall 2022 to winter 2023. Yes, yeah. so you know, the way we have always done this is tell people at the earliest, right? It's always possible that it could be later, but at the earliest fall of 2022. Okay, okay. Thank you. Um, Ms. Albert, we haven't put together the evaluation committee yet at this time. Um, we'll know later on. She wanted to know how many people will be on the RFP committee. But it will be an odd number.
part of this is also since we have to do training, we want to make sure that, that, that we have enough time to do uh, the training in advance and get all the uh, approvals and direction. If there are no other questions, I don't wanna keep everybody. Um, so uh, as stated before, this presentation uh, will be available uh, as well as all the other presentations. If there are other questions, uh, please reach out to us and uh, we will uh, be meeting with the resident council um, to get their thoughts about how to proceed with their nomination process. And uh, when ready, that will be publicized. With the, within the Holland Gardens community. Thank you. You're very Thank welcome. You. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Council President. I think that was you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Have a great night. Good night. Take care. Vivian. Yes. I have a something going on down here that I need uh, you to address. Reginald Jones, you're on too. Um, right, we, but we shouldn't do, if it's a personal thing, we shouldn't do it on this public meeting. Can 